today finds us in the glorious countryside of Devon in search of Bowerman's Nose. Bowerman's Nose is a stack of weathered granite on Dartmoor, close to the village of Manhattan and about a mile from Houndtor. The folklore surrounding this stone goes something like this. There was a huntsman called Bowerman who lived on the moor about a thousand years ago. He was a big, strong man with big hands and shoulders and a heart that was almost as big as both of those. One day he went hunting with his hounds on the moor and while he was chasing a hare he unwittingly ran into a coven of witches. He accidentally overturned their cauldron and disrupted their ritual ceremony. The witches were absolutely furious and they decided to punish him and so the next time he went out hunting one of the witches named Lavera transformed into a hare and led Bowerman and his hands into a mire. As a final punishment, she turned them to stone. The dogs can be seen as a jagged chain of rocks on the top of Hound Tor, and the huntsman became the rock formation now known as Bowerman's Nose. The enraged villagers stormed up to the witches and drove them out of Devon. So, inspired by my hourly escapades of last week, I decided to revitalise my owl, um, my felt owl pattern. I have quite, well, had quite a popular felt owl that I used to sell quite a lot of um, in different varying colours um, of browns and blacks. Um, this used to sell quite well on my Etsy shop, so I thought. I know I'm going to revisit him because I wasn't quite happy with him the last time I made him and I thought I need to look at this again. So today I thought good opportunity, I will go in and see what else I can do with him to make him more, um, more of a 
I don't know. Fancy owl. Let's go with <laughs> let's go with fancy owl. Um, so this is the original. Those weren't his original eyes, by the way. That was me just playing around with the eye shape. I thought, if I change the eye shape, does that make a difference? No, it didn't. That's his original head shape there. And I thought, would it make a difference if I rounded that off? And then I thought, actually, no. I quite like the little swoop up here. This is just an insight into my design mind process here. Um, so I thought, no, I don't like that. I thought maybe if I squared the ears off a bit and then I thought actually I like the top edge being square but I'm not so sure about this being square because I quite like the rounded edges of that so then we got to this bit here and this idea is the one that I quite liked which is keeping the bottom of the owl shape as it is adding some fancy flouncy detail onto the top there and flattening the top of the head instead of the swoopy head up there. So we did that. And then uh, I'm gonna keep the body and the wing as they are because I quite like those. I still, they still work for me when I'm in my design head. They, they work quite nicely. So keep those keep the little stitches for his feathers but change the shape of the head um, change the eyes because those weren't the original eyes I'll see if I can find some of my original owls and I'll do a comparison when I've made up my first um, owl from this pattern that I'm going to do um, so this is what we've got at the minute. I've kind of inked him in. I might give him some colour because I want to play with the different colour ways that I would like to do this. Um, and then play around with maybe, I'm thinking perhaps a sequin or something just to make him more of a fancy owl. So that's the task ahead uh, to make a fancy owl. <laughs> I will definitely give him a go. I'm going to colour him in now at the minute and just have a look at some different colourways and I'll come back to you when I've got more of an idea of what I'm going to make him from. So this morning we have a couple of parcels that have arrived in the mail today, which I'm going to open. Uh, the first one is a delivery of some felt from a company called Cloudcraft. Cloudcraft are great. Let me put that in focus there. Because um, they do the pure wool felt, which I love. And so uh, really good price as well. And I am going to open this now. Let's see if I can find my soup DD scissors. I need to get one of those cutters, but I don't want to cut the fat. That would not be good. And I'm going to the packaging on the now. So get all this lovely goodness out into the world. Ooh, sweeties. Yay. Another bonus. So the colours I got, obviously I've got some love hearts there for later. Yeah. And these are the separate colours I ordered. It's a really nice light blue and like a spearminty colour and an even lighter 
be a minty green colour. This is like a light pistachio, I would imagine. Light pistachio. And then I got a set of their blues because I wanted this one that's on top, the petroleum, and they didn't have it in the single sheets, but they had it in the set. And I actually needed some of the other colours as well. There's lots of blue ones in there, so I got petroleum. And we've got like a marl colour. Beautiful turquoise, a royal blue, an icy blue, a baby blue, like a marine blue. This one's like an inky blue, and then a sky blue. So those are those ones in there. I'll pop those over to that side. And this one, which I have been looking forward to, uh, it's my last one for a while because I decided to just give them a rest for a little bit. I'll probably rejoin again at some point with Scrawlerbox, who send me some fabulous stuff. And it's like getting a little present in the mail and you never know what you're going to get. And it's a bit like Christmas morning when I open one of these. So without further ado, let's pull the pull tab. Love that. Just one little rip and you're into your art supplies. And here we are. So, there's the little magazine. I'll do a little zine with how to use all the things that they put in there, but I'm going to put that to one side for a minute. There's also a lovely piece of artwork, which is usually to do with uh, the art supplies that they give you. And this is lovely. It's by Camilla Gardner. And I don't know if you can see that Instagram. Instagram there on the website. But that's really nice. A nice piece of artwork. So that's lovely. Ooh, we have paper. Ooh, watercolour paper. And cold press watercolour paper. So that means it's going to have some nice texture on it. Yes, yeah, that's great. So how many pieces of that? We've got eight sheets of watercolour paper. So this is telling me a little of what may be in there. Not sure though. Watercolour-y, paint, pencil -y things. Let's have a little look. Oh. Ooh. Ooh, I see Derwent things, yes. <laughs> I love Derwent. Did I ever say that? I love Derwent. Ooh, and I've got a rhubarb crumble swizzles, which will possibly go over to my friend over there. Thank you very much. You can have that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a rhubarb fan, I have to say. I think everybody loves rhubarb except me. And there are reasons why I don't like rhubarb, which I'll probably tell you one day, but not today. Anyway, sticker for this month. I love these stickers is I think based on some of the artwork that this uh, print comes from so that's that there a little cheat sheet and look we have some aquafine watercolors we also have this beautiful uh, water brush it's got quite a big water tank in it I like that and it's got a push button mechanism there so that you can um, push through more water when you need it. That looks quite good. It's got a nice fine tip on it as well. I can see that. Really nice. Medium, not too big, not too little. Great for taking out and about. So that's that one. So yes, some De La Rowney Aquafine watercolours. So we've got ultramarine, we have got lemon yellow, uh, hooker's green dark, alizarin crimson hue, we have a Chinese white and we have a raw sienna. So lots of mixable colours there. So if you 
all the variety of colours from the few that we got there. And what have we got pencil wise? Ooh, China Graph pencils, excellent. So we've got a white China Graph pencil there and a black one. I've not seen these before. These are Western design. I haven't heard of those. Um, and it says for films, plastics, china and glass, but they're also great for your artwork as well. And the magazine, I would imagine, will give some idea of what you can use these for. So let's look back at our little cheat sheet. So De La Rani Aquafine watercolour tubes. Um, De La Rani obviously are a British company based in the south of England. And they are modern high quality pigments. I would say the Aquafine are like a student grade. Uh, watercolour, still very, very good, very pigmented. And I have used Dale Rani before and have got some in a box. Uh, one of my palettes I have used. So the next thing was the push button water brush uh, made from durable nylon fibres. As I said, it's got quite a nice large barrel on there for lots of water. With the China Graph pencils, which um, are very versatile and you can combine them with specially selected pigments and wax. Oh, they are combined with specially selected pigments and waxes resistant to water. So that makes them interesting to work with watercolour. So I'll probably try that. It's probably one of the techniques that I outlined in the booklet when I have a look at it. And then the watercolour paper is custom made for scrawler and is excellent paired with any water-based medium and it contains eight sheets of premium quality paper and the challenge this time is birds of a feather which is right at my alleyway i love doing birds so um let's have a little look at the booklet and see what other tips we can get from there so here we've got the scrawler zine it's very handy they've just started doing this in the past year I think where they they outline what you have in your box so we've got the supplies menu which we've just gone through we've got the sticker we've got the watercolor paints vibrant watercolors easy to mix with the white watercolor is there it can be used on its own to add highlights but it can also um, add it to other colors um, to give it an atmospheric effect, not not a normal pencil, it says there. Uh, the waxy core of these pencils is extremely water resistant. Use it with the knowledge that the watercolours will not affect it, so that's good. The Artist Print, which is the lovely one that I showed you earlier. Uh, the little sweetie. Oh, that was a lemon meringue one there in the book. Sad times, friend. You got the nice one of the rhubarb one. <laughs> no lemon meringue for me. Never mind. I shall sigh. Um, what else have we got? Yeah, that's it on there. So we've got everything that's in the box. That's always good. Uh, you have like a little artist feature. Look at that beautiful little doggy there. He's so cute. And flamingo. A little thistle there with a butterfly on so that's nice a nice to have a little read through you find out someone else's working process um using the white china graph and the white watercolor that gives you little tips there to use things to try so things if you've not tried them before that's something to do this is the gallery from february's scroller box um, which I'm trying to remember. Oh, it's the acrylic paint, the matte acrylic paint, was it, I think, in that one. That was quite nice. And then another little extra on avian art, which is drawing birds. So birds have been the inspiration for artists for many, many years. And obviously this goes back through the history and the symbolism, which is really nice. They are offering the sticker packs. Uh, so if you missed any, you can go back and get some of the stickers. So they've got um, a new sticker pack, which includes never before released stickers. So um, scroll and box members can order those. And this, uh, the black wing pencil. I love black wing pencils. Can I just say this? And we got a free one in one of the boxes recently. And 
I'd been despairing because I was getting to the end of my black ribbon pencil and then suddenly this one arrived and it's a beautiful like a colour gradient blue that was specially made for a uh, scroller box so they sell boxes of those uh, I think they're about £36 or something like that but they are well worth it lovely pencils so that's that and I would imagine that at some point I might have a little go at the challenge and I'll probably take you along with me on the journey so I promised you a look at um, the owls when I when, when I rejigged them. This is the original owl. He was made in uh, natural colours, um, mainly in natural colours. The Halloween ones were green and black and orange and black. Uh, but generally they're kind of browns and taupes and greys. And I will probably still do the new one in these colours as well because I know some people like a nice and natural looking owl. I am the colour fiend, so I like to do colour. So this is my first incarnation of the new pattern. I liked him. Uh, I think the thing I didn't like about this one is, um, you know when you cut your fringe and you cut it just that little bit too short? That's the kind of vibe I'm getting from this owl because I think I placed his eyes a little too low. So, in order to rectify that, did another one. And the eyes on this one are maybe just slightly too high, but I'm getting in the ballpark of where it needs to be. He's got a lovely glittery beak. He's got gold thread. He's got a little star on his wing. I have upgraded the wing. It's got a new layer to it. Obviously, it's got that new top part and new eyes. And I'm really quite happy with this guy. And I will be making him in lots of different colourways. So that ends the video for this week. Um, I will be uh, uploading a video on Thursday, which is to do with my um, handmade watercolour purchases throughout the few years that I've been buying them. Uh, so that will be out on Thursday. But this video is at an end. So TTFN, have a great week and I'll see you next time. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and hit the bell and you'll never miss an upload. Thanks for now. Have a great week. Bye.